The topic of this video is Wildfly Swarm Microservices. This publicly available reference architecture paper describes the design, implementation, and deployment of Wildfly Swarm Microservices on Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. The associated GitHub repository contains all the source code and related artifacts. Chapter four of this paper walks the reader step-by-step step through duplicating the reference architecture environment in an OpenShift cluster. Those same instructions are also duplicated in the readme file of the GitHub repository. I've set up this environment in my own OpenShift cluster. So if I go there and I do OC get pods, I can see the various pods, including the ones that are running, as well as the builder pods. So just to not see those, I'm going to say show all equals false. And here are my running pods. Now to access them, uh, OpenShift pods are exposed through routes. So I'm going to do OC get routes. And I can see that there's a presentation app, which is the main application and entry point. I'm going to copy and paste that host name and hit it with my browser. And that is how I access the application front end. So this is a flight search. And if I do a search for flights from Los Angeles to New York, let's pick JFK and pick dates for a round trip flight, I get the results, which is 729 flights. I can individually see the details, or I can change this to a one-way flight and change it to various dates. Right, so um, if I go and look at the source code, the way this happens is there's a presentation app which provides the client, which is JavaScript based, as well as following an API gateway pattern to create an aggregator that is actually accessing the microservices in the back end and providing them to the front end. There is an airport service, which is essentially in charge of the airport names and distances and so on. And there is the flight service, which has the static itinerary for all the flights based on the schedule. And there is a sales service, which is the pricing service, figures out how to price each flight depending on the date and how, how, how long the flight is and so on. So on top of these, there's a couple other things we're going to discuss. There is the edge service, which is essentially a reverse proxy with both static and dynamic routing. There is a second version of the cell service that we're providing for A-B testing. And I'm going to get into those a little bit later on. But so um, right now, I'm going to go back here. And there was another route expose. And that's for Jaeger query. And Jaeger is the distributed tracing um, software. So I'm going to open that in the browser. And I'm just going to search, let's say, for the presentation service being hit. And I find one. And there we go. And here you can see basically in a tree drill down form, the presentation service makes other calls. There's other spans open. It calls the flight service, which calls the airports. Or presentation itself calls airports. Or it calls sales, and so on and so forth. So um, that's the basic functionality uh, in terms of the code. Um, if we open a simple service like airports and take a look at what's there, the main entry point is the service, the airport service. And um, sorry, the controller here is the REST application. Um, so you can see it has a path. And it defines two different operations, slash airports by get and airport slash code if you want to get a specific airport. There is an initialization um, class for it, which is a web listener. And that just takes care of eager loading of all the airports from um, the provided uh, spreadsheet in there. And um, it has a configuration file for Jaeger to be able to connect to it. 
and so on. Um, so this is a pretty simple wildfly swarm um, REST application. And really a lot of the work just happens in the POM XML by pointing to wildfly swarm and so on. Um, we're able to simply spin it off and have a REST service um, as a microservice right there. Some of the more complicated ones include presentation and so on. But um, let's go back to the application and its functionality. So one of the things that I'm going to show here is that actually if we look at the code in presentation, um, you can see that um, if we look at, let's say, the gateway controller, it uses a threat size based on Hystrix setting to create a threat pool. Now, I'm going to go here and get a log of the presentation pod and grab for the word batch in there. Notice that it's sometimes saying it's doing batching of 20 tickets followed by seven tickets. That's because there were 27 results and it's doing batches of 20. So it does 20 and then it does another seven. Now imagine based on your environment, you wanna change this. You wanna provide external configuration. So the way we can do that is by going and um, let's scroll down here. Um, creating a project defaults file and specifying different Hystrix configuration. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to copy paste that in there. And then I can create a config map based on this file. And um, I already had the config map. But once I have that, I can go and copy and paste the configuration of this. So what I'm doing here is mounting this project defaults that I just created on the pod under deployments, which makes it in the class path. So what that will do is that it's going to selectively um, it's going to selectively overwrite some of the properties. So if I'm going to look at the pods right now, I can see a presentation dash two is coming online. As as presentation dash two gets deployed, presentation dash one is going to get terminated and we're going to have that one. So what's going to happen as a result of this is that um, our threat pool is going to change now, and instead of 20, it's going to be 30. So if we do a search for a flight to New York, which gives us, let's say, 27 flights back, it should happen in one batch of 27 instead of two batches of 20 plus 7. If we check back, and presentation 2 is online now, so I can go ahead and do the same log, and this time look in this new pa um, pod. But before doing that, I'm going to have to do another flight search for New York. So this is a little bit slower now because there we go. It was the new pod. And it is 27 flights. Now, if we do this search now, we can see it's pricing a batch of 27 instead of 20 plus 7 because the configuration for Hystrix threat pool has changed. So that's one of the secondary changes we do to this deployment. The other one is A-B testing. So um, I have the sales service in charge of pricing, but I also have the sales to service, which is essentially the same, but I'm trying a different price calculation. And I wanna have both of these at the same time for the users. And I want to split the users in half consistently. So what I'm doing is, based on um, the IP address of the users, I'm sending them half of them to sales for pricing and half of them to sales too. So the only difference here is the extra hop discount, which is used in the pricing formula, is changed from point eight to point nine in sales too. So that's what sales to is. But how do we actually get um, half the callers that have like, let's say an even or odd IP address to get sent over to sales to for pricing? The way we do that is by using this edge um, reverse proxy, which is essentially 
an in-house solution that, that does some of the same things that, let's say, Netflix, Zool, or similar software do in other ecosystems. Um, so if I look in here, uh, there's a miscellaneous folder that includes a routing JavaScript. The routing JavaScript says if somebody's trying to go to the cell service, let's look at their IP address. Let's print their IP address and figure out if the last digit of the IP address is even. And if it is, instead of cells, let's send them to cells too. So to do this, um, I'm going to have to, first of all, copy this JavaScript file to my shared file system. Once it's there, I have to create a persistent volume for OpenShift and use the persistent volume claim in the pod. So let's first verify this. There we go. So the edge persistent volume claim is bound to the shared file system. And now all I have to do is use this command to go tell OpenShift to um, go to the deployment config for Edge and add a new persistent volume claim called Edge and mount it off the root at slash Edge. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to watch as the pod gets um, deployed again. Notice now we have an edge two deploy. So it's the same thing again. Edge one is going to terminate when edge two is ready to take it over. Now what happens when this is put in there? If I go and look at my edge mapping, um, I have this JavaScript mapper that essentially goes, looks at slash edge slash routing um, dot JS, tries to find that JavaScript file. And if that JavaScript file is there, what it's going to do is read it and based on the result of the JavaScript file, um, reroute the request however it might be rerouted, in which case, in this case, it's going to be cells 2 that it's going to go to. Once the Edge 2 service is up and running, let's go back to the application and do another search. Let's see if we can notice the price change. It's 247 for the 922 flight. I'm going to change it to the 23rd. And again, this is the first time hitting it, so it's slow. And then change it back to the 22nd. It's 271 for the flight. Um, so let me look at the log for edge two. And notice that it's saying it's detected my IP address ending in 100 and it's rerouting it to the B instance. If I look at the log for the sales to service, I can also see that it's being asked to price tickets and this wasn't happening before because this is based on the edge service, reading that JavaScript, following the IP address and routing to sales two instead of sales one. Um, so the code um, is all available in the GitHub repository. Um, you can go through it and the reference architecture paper um, contains a lot of detailed explanation for each part of these. Chapter five, design and development, basically walks through every single aspect of the microservice development and what's going on in here.